Students, when did your teacher get fired on the first day of school? The summer holiday was amazing, but like any great things, it didn't last. So we were back in school on Monday. Everybody was happy to reunite with their classmates again. Everybody had crazy summer stories. However, deep down we knew this school year is going to be more difficult, so our hype was quickly faded when we have encountered the harsh reality that things got serious and it's back to work again. Somehow, we felt a bit better after the event which happened that morning. We were all sitting in class waiting for our math teacher to come along to welcome us back from our summer breaks and to give us the talk. Not that talk, you know, the objectives for this school year and all that stuff. Basically, the motivational talk that we needed to pump those numbers up and get good grades in the exam so he can receive his bonus and a claim of how good of a teacher he truly is. I'm not hating on the guy, he was cool, but at the end of the day he was still the math teacher and it was my job as a student to dislike him. Fifteen minutes go by and he still hasn't shown up. Half an hour later, still no teacher. We started wondering what was going on. A substitute teacher walks in and apologizes for the absence of our teacher. We started asking questions about him that the substitute teacher didn't really know much about the situation. A few moments later, our math teacher walks in. He was wearing flip-flops and his hair was all messed up. We were shocked as he always wore a suit and dressed really formal. I was thinking, come on man, what did this summer do to you? Did he really let himself go? Must be all the math problems. He thanked the substitute teacher and then apologized to the class. He then proceeded saying, don't ask, don't ask. It was kind of hard not to ask when you show up in flip-flops for the first day of school, mate. Then he continued saying, you know how students are sometimes late for their class? Well, let's just say it can happen to teachers as well. For the remaining few minutes of the class, he went on about what we have in store for this school year. You could sense that his speech was not that well prepared and he was improvising as he went along like most students do during presentations. Nobody took him seriously, however. Boys out in the back were giggling and the girls in front started gossiping. He quickly realized this might not be the ideal context to begin the school year, duh, and then left without saying anything. The following day, we were looking forward to the math class so we can find out more about what actually happened. However, the teacher did not show up. Instead, we got the principal who was holding an announcement about how the math teacher got fired because he forgot the start date of this school year. The teacher forgot about the first day of school, which was unbelievable, but so funny at the same time. Maybe not that funny to him, however. We found out later that he was getting through a rough period with his wife or whatever. Tragic adult stuff. Nevertheless, forgetting about the first day of school. Anyways, weeks later, we got a new math teacher. She was never late. I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty funny story to start the video out on, but holy schmoly talk about indulgent. I hope your English teacher was more present so they could teach you a little about what Shakespeare has to say about wit and brevity. Another summer was over and we were back to school now. That didn't bother me too much because school for us was always kind of fun. We weren't the brightest school in our city and more than often we used to get students that didn't perform well or who were rude and talk back to teachers. In other words, discipline was lacking. Everybody was excited about the new teacher. The last teacher we had was great, but he retired. Apparently, he couldn't keep up with us. The bell rang, and we sat in our bench. Waiting to see what this new teacher was all about, a young lady enters the class and presents herself. Hello class, my name is Rosie, and I'm going to be your new geography teacher. I am really excited to meet you all. I could already see this going sideways. A back at the end of the class shouts, We are not excited at all. I could notice the teacher getting easily disturbed by the answer. I was thinking then, if she was low tolerance for this type of stuff, then she is going to be in big trouble. Because that was the usual vibe during our classes. She managed to contain herself and to respond, I am sorry that you feel that way. However, I promise to make the subject really exciting. You will grow to love it. I am sure of it. The voice at the back shouted again, Geography is boring. Leave us alone. The teacher was getting more and more anxious now. Judging by her young appearance and overwhelming excitement, you could tell that she just graduated and was just keen to start her career into teaching. Oh boy, she picked the wrong class as a debut. The voice in the back continued. What's the matter? Have you lost your voice? The whole class started laughing and the teacher became angry. She lost her control and said, Listen to me, you little brat. No one talks to me like that. You hear me? Everyone stopped from laughing, being shocked by her reaction. Usually, you see the teacher leaving the classroom in tears, yeah, we were that bad, but rarely reacting this angry. 
To instigate, the voice continued, I can talk however I want. Make me change my mind. Hearing this, the teacher instantly threw her notebook at the student, hitting him. The student didn't suffer any injuries or anything, but theoretically he was hit by a teacher, which obviously is a big no-no. You could instantly see the regret on the teacher's face. Poor her. Another one bites the dust. My classmate victimized himself that he's hurt, and that caused the teacher to panic. This wasn't a good way to start school. Afterwards, we heard that she was told that she can resign and that this would be her best option. Otherwise, she will be fired for assaulting a student which can go on her record and affect her future employability. So she resigned because she was kind of forced to. I pity the next teacher who will walk into our classroom. We were horrible, I must admit. You may have been horrible, but as someone who once went to college for teaching and dropped out, one of the things they're supposed to learn is how to deal with difficult students in classrooms. I feel like she didn't do great in that one. It was the opening ceremony that we hold every time at the beginning of the school year. The purpose of this is to welcome back the students from their summer holidays and to have a formal ceremony to start the year in fashion. It also proved useful for students to get to know their classmates and to get accustomed with the teachers. Our school took this quite seriously as they thought it was important to offer students a warm welcome. So they tried to make everything nice for students by putting up decorations in every classroom, inviting guest speaker like the mayor or local authors to give us an inspiration speech, and sometimes they even had people who gave out performances such as dance choreographies, singing, and that type of stuff. We were always curious what they would have prepared next time. It was just something nice to have to make the lousy feeling of starting school go away. This year, things felt a bit different. We turned up and went to the schoolyard to find where our head teacher is and where our class sits. We were usually organized based on the grades we were in, so you'd have to find your class so that everyone would sit together. After I found my classmates, we laughed and caught up with things. Then we quickly noticed how the school vibe feels a bit blunt. There were no decorations like they usually put up, no balloons, flowers, or none of that. The teachers looked awfully stressed running up and down. Something was not right and you could have sensed it. We asked our teacher what was happening and she simply replied, it is his fault. She looked really stressed and mad so he stopped asking more questions. The principal got on stage to make an announcement. He went on apologizing for this year's ceremony and the black entertainment and decorations they had in place. His speech was a bit passive aggressive. It felt like he was blaming someone for this without calling out particular names. There wasn't going to be any spectacle or the usual warming welcome this time. So everybody started booing. The principal was clearly embarrassed and left the stage. We started wondering among ourselves what could have happened because this was rather unusual for our school. Either way, hours later, most of us forgot about the whole thing. It wasn't as important to us as it was for the school, I guess. However, we found out days later that the reason for it was due to the budget. More specifically, one of the teachers who was entitled with raising and holding the funds for the ceremony gambled all the money a week before school started. The luck wasn't really on his side and lost everything. Needless to say, he was fired instantly and probably got in more serious trouble as he technically embezzled the money. The next year after that, no teacher was put in charge of the opening ceremony and instead the principal was the one responsible to handle the funds and all the arrangements. Hopefully he doesn't have unhealthy habits like the teacher. Huh. My school never really had a big opening day anything. Like, the most we had to look forward to was teachers just taking it easy the first day as we figured out what we were doing. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. It was the first day of school and everybody was bored already. Our teacher noticed our lack of excitement and wanted to do something nice for us. So he proposed to the principal to take us to the National Museum, which was only five minutes away from the school. Obviously, the school year just started, so it wouldn't make sense for the teacher to bombard us with homework or lots of material from day one. The principal agreed to his proposition and thought that would be a brilliant idea as long as he gets the kids back in time and no incidents take place. Oh boy, this was going to be fun. Anything was more fun than sitting in class anyway. Everyone got excited, packed their stuff, and went out the door. The teacher kept reinforcing the idea that everyone should stay close together and close to him, no fooling around. Moments later, we arrive at the museum. As we went along, the teacher started explaining the exhibits to us. You could tell that he was really passionate about art, and that made us listen. Well, some of us anyway. The museum was not so big, so we finished seeing everything in half an hour and still got plenty of time to return back to school. However, before that, our teacher told us to go and use the bathrooms if we wish before we go back. So we did. 
A few minutes later, everyone got back together and we were on our way back to school. We enter back into the class to wait for the final bell until we can go home. The teacher was satisfied that all of us looked more lively now. He said, I told you guys we will have fun. I hope you all enjoyed our trip to the museum. Maybe we can go again soon. Right after finishing his sentence, the principal walks into the classroom looking absolutely furious. His face was all red like he was about to blow up. The principal shouted, you forgot about him! The teacher had no clue what the principal was talking about or why he was so mad. The principal continued, you forgot about George, darn it! He went to the bathroom and when he got back he said that you guys were gone. I've just received a call now from the receptionist of the museum. Come see me in my office right now. They both left the classroom, and then we were left looking at each other. How did everyone forget about George? George was the silent type. You know, every class has that one student that just keeps himself to himself, doesn't talk much, basically being like a ghost. He always used to sit in the last row, playing his games. People hardly ever noticed him or talked to him, but I wasn't expecting this from the teacher. Apparently George had some tummy issues and took a bit longer than others. By that time, we were gone. At first I found the whole situation a bit funny, but then I felt sorry for George and for the teacher. The next day, another teacher shows up and introduces himself as our new professor. Meaning that our teacher was fired right away. That made me sad he was cool. This new teacher never took us to any museums, but made sure to remember every one of us. I feel a little bad criticizing the first story for being so long because I didn't realize all of these were going to be so long and full of prose. We walked in the first day of school, eyes fixed on the empty playgrounds, our feet reluctant to leave that hot summer sidewalk. Got a bunch of writing majors posting in this thread. Back in high school, we used to have a principal with anger management issues. He was so funny, but so inappropriate. I am still uncertain how he managed to keep his job for so long. He was also a petrol head, and he invested loads of money into his car. The school car park was quite small, and trust our principal always made sure to park his car in the best spot. He would turn up hours early just to park his car in the best spot so nobody messes with his car. Nobody would dare to, anyway. It was the beginning of the school year, and usually we all gathered in the gym for the principal's announcement so that he can welcome us and wish us a good school year. This time he comes on stage and didn't look very happy. I looked at my other classmates and they noticed it as well. We were in for a real treat. He began by saying, first of all, I want to welcome you back and wish you good luck in this academic year. He paused briefly, then he continued. Second of all, I don't know which of you scratched my car, but when I find out, I'm going to have a word with you. And then he left. Just like that, that was his announcement. Fifteen seconds. He was clearly furious. We couldn't believe that somebody actually touched his car. We quickly tried to find out which one of us it was, but no one would admit it because they knew they were going to get in trouble. To our surprise, we found out later that day that the principal went back into his office and watched the CCTV. He did a bit of detective work to get to the bottom of it. Funny enough, it turned out that the new teacher, who was also a beginner driver, slightly scratched his rear wing as she parked. She then noticed and moved her car on another parking spot so the principal wouldn't suspect. She clearly underestimated a man's love for his car. We found out that she was fired three days after for damaging property on school premises. The principal clearly found a loophole in the policy to make her go away and sent out a message that no one should mess with his car. The parking spot next to his car was always left empty after that. I'm not a car person, so I do not understand that mindset. Hell, I was standing by my car once, a friend was talking to me about how much he had to spend on a paint job because someone scratched his baby, and in response, I just keyed my own car. He yelled at me, angry that I would do that to my car. I just laughed. To be fair, my car wasn't all that nice. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.